Hey homies, I'm Steven Iwaszki from Adventure Yoga and today I've got about a 50 minute sort of end of day reset practice. This is a lot of the work that I do at the end of the day when I need to just reset my body from all of the work of the day. So there are a few props that you might want for class today. I'm gonna recommend a strap and a blanket. So I've got a yoga belt, yoga strap, and a yoga blanket. Uh, if you've got those, awesome. I'll put links to recommended blanket and strap in the description for this video so you can always check those out. Uh, yeah, and if you don't have a yoga blanket and a yoga strap. You can use anything that will work, a blanket, a cushion, a belt, a tie, whatever. It's all good. We're gonna be pretty slow today. So like I'm wearing my longer pant yoga pants because it's uh, not a very active practice and it's just to help me stay warm as we go through these slower movements and just help us open our body up from, from the day. All right, ready for that? Cool, unroll your mat, grab your props, and well, in a few seconds, I'll say, please come into child's pose. Please come into child's pose. Take your knees wide and fold forward. If you want to use any of the props that we've gathered for class today in your child's pose, do. Grab them, use them as you like. Take your arms out in front of you here, but you don't have to stretch them straight. Have your elbows and your hands on the ground, so your forearms are on the ground. Have your big toes touching and your knees wide so that your chest can come down between your legs. Close your eyes. Start to breathe through your nose. And feel your body start to settle. As gravity starts to pull it down. As your muscles start to relax a little here, you might feel your bones shift into place. Start to pay attention to your breath. Make your inhale and your exhale roughly the same length as each other. Follow your breath inside and notice. Notice what your body is feeling as it starts to settle. Notice where your body is feeling as it starts to settle. And notice how your mind feels. your heart feels. Really start to allow your body to shift closer to your mat. Now let's find a little more length for our spines. So to do that we're going to lift our foreheads off the ground. So lift your forehead up off the ground and then stretch through your spine. Think about moving your shoulders away from your ears, ears stretching away from your shoulders, and then bring your forehead back down to the ground there. Push down and forward a little with your hands so that your hips shift back and you find a little more length through the sides of your body as well. Help you seat your seat onto your heels a little bit more.
and then relax here. And just tune in and check in with yourself. Take your hands back behind you. So take your arms back, maybe hold your feet. I like that. I find it's quite comforting to hold my feet here, but it might not be available for you. You can rest your arms on your thighs. Reach back with your hands, rest them on the ground, or hold the soles of your feet. Steady your breath. How are you? How do you feel? Stay in child's pose, but take your arms forward again. And this time we're going to come up onto our hands and knees. So bring your hands on either side of your head, push down, come up. Take your time and come into all fours as you come up. Hi. So for all fours, have your knees underneath your hips and your hands underneath your shoulders, your wrists underneath your shoulders. So have a nice short all fours. Then move your chest down. Lift up through your butt. Turn your thighs in a little so you can stick your butt back as you lift it up. And then look forward and look up. Move your shoulders now away from your ears. Lift through your chest. And lengthen through the back of your neck as well. Oh yeah. Ah. Nice and slow and steady movement into cow pose. And let's move it in that same slow and steady way into cat pose. Bring your chin down towards your chest and look down. And then keep that rounding of your spine going round into your mid back. Tuck your tailbone underneath you, move your hips forward, round into your lower back. Push through your hands, push through your knees, move your belly up towards the sky, move your face towards your hips, hips towards your face. Cat pose. And then slow and steady back into cow pose. Move your chest down and forward, hips back and up. Lift through your chest, look up and lengthen through your spine here as you stretch across the front of your belly and back into cat. Do one more of each of these, just a little bit faster. And then come back into all fours. Stretch your right arm out in front of you, turn your right palm in, and stretch your left leg back. Yeah. Let's get our core a little active here. Work to have your left shoulder over your left wrist here. Push down through your left hand, push down through your right foot. Stretch up through your right thumb, and stretch back through your left leg. Then bring your elbow and knee to touch. So round your back, ground and draw in with your elbow and knee, and then stretch it out. Look forward, look up a little, and draw it in again. Viagrasana. Stretch it out, 
and draw it in. Back to all fours. Guess what? Other side. Stretch your left arm out. Turn your left palm in. Stretch your right leg back. Steady your breath. If you want to close your eyes during this, it just can maybe make you feel a little bit differently what's going on. Maybe a little more internal vision. Maybe not literal vision. All right, we've been holding this. Core is active. Bend your left knee. No, left elbow, that's called, and your right knee. Draw it in. Elbow to knee. Push through your right hand, push through your left knee, and then stretch it out again. Look up, lift up through your left thumb, through your right heel. Draw it in, elbow to knee. Stretch it out, Viagrasana, tiger bones. Elbow to knee again. And then all fours, Barmanasana. Walk your hands forward a little. Palakasana, plank bones. Tuck your toes, straighten your legs. And find the length for your palakasana. Shoulders over your wrists, heels over the balls of your feet. Nice straight line through your body. So that maybe we could place a board, a plank, on your back and it would rest on the back of your head, on the back of your shoulders, on the back of your mid-back, on your butt, and on your heels. And be straight still, not parallel to the ground, but straight. All right, that's enough. Bend your knees, shift it back into a bent knee, down dog. So push your hands down and forward, move your chest back, lift your hips up. Straighten your legs if that's available. And then push through your hands, stretch out through your shoulders, lift up through your hips, stretch your heels down, maybe to the ground, maybe towards the ground a little bit more. Keep that, and then, like we did in cow pose, without the upper back bend though, we're gonna lengthen our spine by move, moving our shoulders away from our ears, ears away from our shoulders. So do that, move your shoulders away from your ears, ears away from your shoulders. It's gonna help your head move sort of down inside your arms, closer to your elbows. And then lift up through your hips, stretch your hips up and back, Heels down and back. Push through your hands. And just a little, like you're trying to open a jar, twist your hands, but don't let them turn. So like you're trying to twist the mat out to the right with your right hand, out to the left with your left hand, but don't let your hands move. Just get your hands and your arms a little more active for that little corkscrew action. Walk your hands back to your feet for Uttanasana. Forward fold at the back of your mat. Bend your knees because it's our first fold forward. Bring your chest down to your legs. So bend your knees enough that you can bring your chest to your thighs and then relax your head. You can shake it. Back and forth, side to side, yes and no. Shake it, maybe. I'm not really sure how to shake it, maybe, but shake it, maybe. Oh, as long as I entertain myself, right? <laughs> Push down through your fingertips here. So I, I like fingertips because your knees are bent. Why be hands flat here? We'll be, we'll be in a little bit. Push down through your fingertips, lift through your Bottom of your butt, you know, sit bones, lift through your sit bones. Lift through your knees so your legs straighten a little bit more, but keep your chest and your legs touching. And then move your shoulders away from your ears, ears away from your shoulders. Get a little longer through your spine. Now see if you can place your hands flat here and keep the shape that you're in. And if you can, do. And then push down through your feet so your legs straighten a little more. Push down through your hands so your legs straighten a little more. Move your shoulders away from your ears, ears away from your shoulders. 
and breathe. Check in. Downward facing dog. But first walk it forward into plank pose. So walk your hands forward, shift forward, Palakasana, plank pose, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Bend your knees if you like. Lift your hips up and back. Move your shoulders away from your ears. Sorry, my shirt is like getting stuck in my mouth now. So now I just have to adjust so that you can hear me. <laughs> Move your shoulders away from your ears, ears away from your shoulders. It's like some wardrobe malfunction I can deal with, but once it starts choking me, it's time to adjust it. Bend your knees, look forward, and walk forward. Back to Uttanasana, it's time at the top of your mat. Here, if you can practice with your legs straight and hands flat, please do. Whatever part of your hands is on the ground, fingertips or hands flat, push down. Move your shoulders away from your ears, ears away from your shoulders to help your spine find its length. Lift through your sit bones, stretch through your spine. If your elbows bend here with your legs straight, Hands flat, Mr. Iyengar would say, walk your hands back a little further until you can have them straight and flat. Legs straight, feet flat, obviously. All right, Ardha Uttanasana. Just for now, for fun, everybody come up on your fingertips. Straighten your arms. Lift your chest, keep your hands on the ground. Bring your wrists underneath your shoulders. Move your shoulders away from your ears. Lengthen through the back of your neck. Ardha Uttanasana. If your back is rounding here, bend your knees and work to find the natural curves of your spine. So rather than a rounded lower back, work to find a slight arch in your lower back. It can help to take your feet a little wider apart. That's what I'm doing here. And then fold forward and back to Uttanasana. Ardha Uttanasana. Uttanasana. One more of these. Ardha Uttanasana. And then place your hands on your hips, on your waist, and stand up. Tadasana. Ooh, shake it off a little. And then sit down. That was enough of that standing up thing. Sit down. If you have a blanket or a pillow, grab that and pop it under your hips and sit on it. And then sit cross-legged and sit up tall. I'm sitting in Sukhasana, cross-legged, so crisscross applesauce, sometimes call that. Um, if you want to sit in Siddhasana, of course you may. If you'd like to sit some other way, please do. I know, so much freedom. Take your left hand and place it on your lower back. Take your right hand. Hold on to your left knee, or just above your left knee. And then look over your left shoulder and twist to the left. Move your shoulders back. Lengthen through your spine. And twist. Steady your breath. And 
untwist. Take your right hand under your lower back. Take your left hand above your right knee. Look over your right shoulder and twist. Roll your shoulders back, lengthen through your spine, and breathe. Move your shoulders down your back, move your ears away from your shoulders, and twist. And come back to center. Take your left hand onto the ground beside you with your fingers pointing out to the side. Stretch your right arm up. Side bend to the left. Bend your left elbow in at your side. Stretch your right arm over to the left. And side bend. You can relax your right arm a little if you like. Or a lot if you like. And then you'll get a little more focus on what's happening in your side bend. If you straighten your right arm and stretch it over to the left, you'll get more stretch and more focus on what's happening on the outside of your ribs on the right side. In your underarm, in your armpit, in your ribs, and all the way down into your hip. It's just different focus because of the different action. Relaxed arm, strong arm. Whatever arm you're doing, push your right hip down. So it's going to get a little lighter here as you lean to the left. So work to get your right hip down. And then come back up to center. Ooh, that's a good stretch. Place your right hand on the ground. Stretch your left arm up. Bend your right elbow inside, side. And side bend to the right. And again, here you get a choice. If you make your left arm less strong, less straight, just let your elbow bend, let your hand relax a little, then you can focus a little more on the right side of your body shortening and getting that, that working. If you make your left arm more active and really stretch it out, you're gonna feel more stretch along the whole left side of your body. Which do you want? What is your body looking for? Push down through your left hip, whatever your left arm is doing, and breathe. And come up to center. Behind your back, interlace your fingers. Roll your shoulders back and stretch your arms straight. So one of the things I often see happen in this particular pose is we do this with our shoulders forward and our biceps turning forward. I actually want the opposite action here to help your shoulders open up. So if you can, bend your elbows, move the top of your arm bones back more and then turn your upper arms out so your biceps, your, uh, your gun show, as it were, turns out to the side rather than forward. So your upper arms turn out, your shoulder blades squeeze in, you get a nice stretch across the front of your chest. That's why we're doing this pose. Lift through your hands. It's for that chest opening to help counter the work of using your phone, using your, your tablet, using your laptop, whatever device rules your day. Stretch up through your spine. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. And then lift your hands so much that you have to bring your chin down to your chest and round your back. And lift your hands higher as you round your back. Steady your breath. Harder to do here because your ribs are pushing into your Maybe not your ribs, but your chest is compressed so that your lungs can't expand as much. Lift through your chin, lift through your chest, lower your hands, and release your arms. Stretch your left leg out in front of you, and bend your right leg. Bring your right foot so that it touches the inside of your left leg. I'm still sitting on my blanket, 
If you have a blanket that you're using, please sit on it here. If you have a strap or a belt that you brought to class, you could also grab that here, please. We'll use it if you have it. So to do this, we're gonna do Janushashasana with a strap. So if you've got the strap, flip it around the sole of your left foot. This always makes me think of horse riding. I have not done a lot of horse riding in my life, but done some. Always makes me feel like I'm about to ride a horse. However, that's my foot. Hmm. Yep, yeah, well, it's called imagination. Stretch up through your spine, turn and face your left foot, or horse, as it were. <laughs> if you don't have the strap, that's cool. Hold your leg where you can keep your leg straight and stretch up through your spine. And then think about your butt and stick it back behind you so it feels like your lower back is arching, drawing in, moving forward. If you have a super mobile lower back and that lower back arch can cause you pain, make sure that you also tone your belly. Everybody should be doing that. Tone your belly and it's gonna help protect your lower back from overarching. For a lot of us, that's not a problem, but for a lot of us, that's a challenge that we face. So, there you go. Stretch out through your spine. Move your shoulders, guess what? Away from your ears, move your ears away from your shoulders. Keep sticking your butt back, keep toning your belly, and really work to find the length in your left leg, length in your spine. Now from the back of your rib cage, move towards your left knee. So take your whole chest forward, moving from the back of your rib cage. Bend your elbows as you pull on the strap. And then, I like this because it's fun, wind your hands up along the strap so that the strap is shorter, so that your hands are closer to your foot, so you can straighten your arms again here. So that might be one wrap, it might be two wraps. I'm not gonna wrap for you. Stick your butt back. <laughs> Tone your belly, move your shoulders down, lengthen through your spine. Move from the back of your ribs towards your left knee. Don't fold forward unless you can just keep that action, legs straight, spine straight, and fold forward. You can go all the way. But we're gonna get the same work here. That's why we're using the prop. The strap. Stretch through your left leg, lengthen through your spine. And then release the strap and sit up. I know, just like that. <laughs> Switch sides. Stretch your right leg out. Bend your left leg. Bring your left foot onto the inside of your right leg. Turn to face your right leg. Take your strap if you're using it, flip it around the sole of your right foot, and then hold your straps. Set up your right horse foot. I just thought I'd keep going with it. <laughs> You're welcome. Glasses adjustment. Stretch up through your spine, sit up tall. Straighten your right leg and push into the strap. Pull with your hands on the strap. Stick your butt back a little. Tone your belly. Stretch up through your spine. Move your shoulders down, away from your ears. Move your ears away from your shoulders. Keep your butt moving back, keep your belly moving back. So it's lower back in, belly back. Lengthen through your spine. And then think about the back of your ribs. From the back of your ribs, move forward. We're gonna keep your back straight as you do this, as you move the back of your ribs towards your right knee. And then your elbows probably have done what mine have done, bent. So wrap your hands around your strap so that you can get closer to your foot and so that you can straighten your arms or get them straighter. Keep your back straight or re-engage as necessary. Stick your butt back, straighten your right leg, move your belly back, move your shoulders down, lengthen through your spine. Move the back of your ribs forward a little more and then stay there. Steady your breath. Release the strap. Sit up. 
Move the strap out of the way. We'll use that once more. Bring the soles of your feet together. Baddha Konasana, or cobbler pose. Sit on your blanket, and on your blanket, shift forward a little so that your pelvis tips forward a little. So there's a part of my thighs that's actually off the ground, the very top, like very top as in closest to my butt, part of my thighs that's off the ground. That's because I'm still on the blanket even though I'm tipping forward. Push your feet together and stretch out through your inner groin, through your inner thighs, through your inner knees. To facilitate that stretch, that means to like help make it happen, engage your butt. Push your feet together, especially your heels, especially the outer edges of your feet. And then your legs will turn out a little bit more. Nice. Nice. Move your lower back forward. Move your belly back. Stretch up through your spine. Baddha Konasana. Steady your breath. Notice how this is making you feel. Notice where it's making you feel. The more that you practice these poses with this sort of slower, steadier approach, more contemplative approach, more like pausing, thinking, noticing, and the more you'll be able to use these poses like this on your own at the end of your day when you need a reset. Push your feet together, stretch out through your inner thighs, engage your butt a little more to turn your legs out and help encourage that stretch in your inner thighs. Sit up tall, that's gonna help too. Take your hands onto your inner thighs. Push down a little as you lift your knees up. Bring your knees together. Whew. Tingly outer foot. Guess we were there for a little bit of time. Come into Vajrasana, also known as Thunderbolt Pose, or sitting on your heels pose. Sit on your heels. <laughs> If it is uncomfortable for you to close your knee joint like this, you can use your blanket in between your knees. You can place it and sit on that. Your butt might not come down to the ground. You can also roll it up or you can fold it up and sit on it so that you can have your butt at a point where your knees are comfortable. Often we use this pose to stretch the front of our ankles. We've done a lot of things that will stretch that today. So we're using it here to prep us for Virasana, hero's pose. So take your feet a little bit wider. So lift your hips, take your feet a little wider and sit down between your heels. I say like that's an easy thing to do. If it is, cool, sit down between your heels. If it's not, you'll probably want your blanket. And you can use that as a prop under your butt so that you can find a spot where you can sit on the ground, that being your blanket right now. Still sit so that you're between your heels so that if the blanket wasn't there, you would be on the ground. Virasana. Hero's pose. Sit up tall like a hero might sit up. I don't know, heroes can slouch. Slouching's okay sometimes. Stick your butt back. I'm gonna slouch a lot tonight. It's cool. Sit up tall. That's why I'm doing this, so that I don't feel so 
lazy while I'm sitting and changing the, I'd say channels, but flicking between different Netflix and Amazons and things like that. <laughs> This is also, I know, helping me just reset and get ready for a good sleep. Wake up feeling ready for a good day. Come back onto your forearms here. We're going to stay on forearms because we can all get lots of work here. Just going to do one more thing before we come down onto our back but not in this pose. Tuck your butt underneath you so that it really tucks and your thighs start to go, oh, hi, you're stretching me. So really tuck your butt, round your back, and then lift your butt a little bit off the ground until your thighs say, okay, that's enough, that's enough. It's probably not much lift, but that depends on how tight your quads are here. And then bring your butt down and sit up again. And you can come out of Virasana. So lift your butt, swing your legs over to one side, find your strap, and as promised, come down onto your back. See if you've got enough room to stretch out. Checking and stretch out as you lie down. Stretch your arms up overhead, stretch out through your toes, point your toes, point your ankles, Plant arm flex them. Stretch out through your hands. Stretch out through your fingers. Stretch out through your fingernails. Is that possible? And then relax. Ah, that felt good. Bend your knees. Place your feet on the ground. Bring your arms down at your sides. And bend your elbows. Setting up for bridge pose. Push down through your feet. Push your upper arms down. Lift your butt. Tuck it underneath you a little as you lift it up. And then push through your upper arms. Lift your chest up off the ground. So the back of your chest. Lift that up. And then bring your shoulders down again. Interlace your hands underneath you. Rock from side to side a little. Tuck your arms in. Straighten your wrists. Push down through your feet. Setu Bandha. Sarvangasana. Open up the front of your hips. We've done a lot of hip flexing. So focus on that opening up the front of your hips here. Tuck your butt. Lift your hips. Up, up, up. Steady your breath. And then lower your hips, release your hands, find your strap. Straighten your left leg out, take the strap around the sole of your right foot, similar to what we did in Chandra Shashasana, except now straighten your right leg up, stretch your left leg out on the ground. Supta Padagustasana variation with the strap. If you don't have a strap or belt, that's cool. That's totally cool. Grab your big toe and stretch your leg as straight as you can up towards the ceiling, wherever that is. If you're holding the strap, hold it in just your right hand. Take your left hand onto the ground. And then move your right leg over to the right a little. And pause. And stretch out through your right leg. And then pull your right foot up towards your head a little more. And pause. Straighten your right leg, straighten your left leg. Stretch your spine. And then take your left hand up off the ground and bring your right foot over to your left hand. Hold the strap in your left hand. Take your right hand down to the ground. Look over your right shoulder, move your left leg, right leg over to the left. Move your right leg over to the left. 
And if you're gonna roll out onto the outer edge of your left hip, cool. Turn on the outer edge of your left foot, outer edge of your left hip. But you don't have to go that far. Go to a point where you're like, I'm good here. I wanna hold it here. Stretch out through both legs. Get a gentle twist in your spine. Yeah, what's happening in your outer right leg, your outer right knee, it's not really gentle, is it? It's a good stretch. And come back up to center. And then hold the strap in both hands. Not quite done this side yet. Lift your head and shoulders. Look at your right knee, and then bring your right knee towards your face, keeping your right leg straight. Lift your head and shoulders. And then bend your right knee. Release your hands from the strap and bring your right leg down. Other side, bend your left knee. Take the strap and place it around the sole of your left foot. Stretch your left leg up. Hold the strap in both hands here. And again, if you're not using a strap or a tie or a belt, you can hold your left big toe with your hand and stretch your left leg as straight as you can here. Whatever works. Stretch out through your right leg, stretch up through your left leg, and then work to lengthen your spine a little bit more. Hold the strap in just your left hand. So I like to actually pass it all into my right hand and then grab it with my left hand so I can get a nice good grip on both straps. Take your right hand onto the ground and then move your left foot over to the left a little bit. Keep your right side heavy. So don't roll off your right leg, off your right hip. To prevent that, just don't take your left leg over too far. Because remember, we're going to do this. Now lift your left leg up towards your head. Keep your left leg as straight as you can here. And then pass it over to your right hand. So move your left leg over with your right hand, grab the strap, bring your left hand to the ground, and then take your left leg over to the right. Yeah, I learned, I could say it correctly this side. All right, straight, stretch both legs straight. And if you're going to go so far that you roll over with your right foot, that's okay. Bring the outer edge of your right foot to the ground, outer edge of your right hip to the ground. Stretch both legs still straight. Notice how this makes you feel. It's a lot less intense on my left knee, left outer leg, outer upper thigh here. Interesting. Interesting. Come back to center. Hold the strap in both hands again, or hold your left foot if you're doing this without a strap. Lift your head and shoulders, look at your left knee. Bring your left knee towards your head. Bring your head towards your left knee. Work to keep your left leg as straight as you can. And then let it go. Move your head away. Bring your head down. Bend your left knee. Let go of the strap. And bring your left leg down. Now just find the strap and move it out of the way. We're going to stay down here for the rest of class. Doesn't that sound just about right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so if you're not quite on your mat and you want to be, just adjust so that you are. And then shake your whole body out a little bit here. Just wiggle, shake. Get ready for Shavasana. Slow down your movements. Close your eyes. Rock your head from side to side a little. Slow your movements down until they stop. Shavasana. Relax 
your mind. So relax your thoughts. Relax your eyes and your cheeks to help relax your mind. Relax your belly so that you can release your breath. I know it can take a lot to let go of that focus. Wiggle your toes and your fingers a little. And then stop that. Wiggle your shoulders and your hips a little. And then stop that. Let your eyes get heavy in your head. So relax your eyes, your forehead, your cheeks. So your eyes might start to feel heavier. Relax your chest. Relax your hips. Let yourself go. Shavasana. Do nothing. your next inhale really slow and long and fill up your lungs from the bottom all the way to the top and then make your exhale do the opposite push out all of your breath and stretch a little and with your next inhale keep it long feel it Breathe in and start to move a little. Make your next exhale really long and slow. Very conscious breath. Bend your knees and turn to one side. And pause there on your side. Last chance for a little moment with yourself. Enjoy it. Keep your eyes closed as you come up and come into a seated position. 
if you want to use your blanket, you can, but we won't be here very long. Bring your hands together in front of your heart, prayer position, and stretch up through your spine. One more chance for me to say, move your shoulders away from your ears, ears away from your shoulders. Tone your belly and sit up tall. This helped you wrap up your day, work out all of the parts of your body that just needed a little focus, a little bit of care. And it helps you have an amazing evening in whatever you've got in store. Thank you so much for practicing today. Namaste. Thanks. Thanks, Omis. Thanks for being here with me. Thanks for practicing. Thanks for helping your body get all of this worked out and ready for the rest of your evening, whatever you've got in store. This is the sort of practice I do before I watch TV or while we're watching TV even. Feels good. Thanks for helping me get this into my body and I hope that it helped you feel good. If you would like to do another class with me on another day, you can click right there and add that class to your watch later list. And if you haven't subscribed, please just click my picture over there to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks. If you got any questions, stick it in the comments. I'll get back to you. See you soon.